Andor, Episode 9, a.k.a. Nobody's Listening, Do You Understand, Kano?, provided a nice ramping up of Cassian's ordeal in prison while also pulling the net tighter on his Ferrix friends, thanks to Miro breaking some rebel eggs to advance her search for Luthen via Andor. The prison scenes were especially excellent, which should be credited to the acting skills of all the cast members, but one must put the spotlight on Andy Serkis, who absolutely slays his role as Kino Loy, the supervisor of Unit 52D. Serkis just expertly nails this character and the faux power he has over his shiftmates, as well as his no-nonsense dedication to the process to ensure his release from prison. Early in the episode, Kino wants nothing to do with the idea of escape, and Andy does a fantastic job at showcasing Kino's annoyance over Cassian's questions and the general unrest his shift made show while they learn about some problems taking place on level 2. Andy then, with just his facial expressions in one simple line, completely changes the tone and feel of Kino upon learning from the doctor that prisoners aren't actually freed anymore. They're just recycled, which finally cracks the veneer of his closed-eyed dedication to the process and clearly sends him on a path to find his freedom and that of his shiftmates through escape. Andy's performance as the episode closes is perfect and one of the reasons this episode hits. Generally though, this episode just did a great job at progressing Andor's various plot lines and allowing for more character growth. Miro in particular seems to be embracing her new role in power because she is quickly becoming a pretty awful Imperial, even though when we first met her, we were sort of meant to feel bad for her and the way the ISB treated her. Now, she seems drunk with success and completely comfortable being a piece of crap, so her Imperial career is advancing brilliantly, and it has been unique to watch. Just when you thought she'd be a sympathetic female figure, you realize that she's just as deranged as other Imperial loyalists, and that says a ton considering Bix reminded us that the ISB is filled with the worst of the worst. This episode definitely did its job playing the middle act role, so all of the nuance set up in the prison, on Ferrix and on Coruscant, will all surely lead to a tension-failed nail-biter next week as this particular story arc comes to a close and moves Andor towards its two-episode finale. How about some top moments? The opening scene between Miro and Bix and the subsequent A New Hope torture homage definitely stood out in this episode. As previously mentioned, it showcased just how determined and evil Dedra Miro truly is. The writers did a bang up job early on in the season making her a character audience could somewhat sympathize with due to her situation with the ISB. Because she seemed bullied by her peers and her points of view were heavily ignored. Now that she has been given a long leash and has scored some brownie points, you can really start to see her for who she is, and that's just another fascist helping the Empire keep its boot on the throat of freedom throughout the galaxy, and she seems to enjoy it. Her interrogation and torture of Bix felt like it was her favorite hobby, so this episode and scene did a great job at shifting Miro to a much darker tone. I'm not completely giving up on Miro potentially being Cassian's sister, but after this scene, it is seemingly unlikely unless she was brainwashed by her rescuers many years ago. The Senate Chamber scene was another standout. Visually, it was a treat for your eyes, but narratively, it did a great job at showing how corrupt and Banana Republic-esque the Senate has become at this point. Mon was essentially being cancelled by her peers for being against the PROD and the Emperor trying to take even more power from the citizens of the galaxy. While some senators clearly still supported Mon, the majority did not, and this scene served as another reminder to Mon that while frightening and dangerous, her commitment to the rebellion is the only way forward to restore any sort of democracy to the galaxy. Sticking with Mothma, her scene with her newly revealed cousin Val Sartha was also a scene worth diving into. If anything, we got more backstory and insights into Val, who is another Shandrillan and a relative of Mon Mothma. Val mentioned an oath that they both took, which I'm assuming is to the Circle, 
and they made it seem as if Vel may have been the person to recruit Mon into the circle and meeting Luthen in the first place. This type of lore is key because it helps to tie legacy characters deeper into new ones like Vel and Luthen, so hopefully we get even more insights into how they all became connected and united in rebelling against the Empire. Finally, and no, it's not the creepy stalker serial scene, but rather it's the closing scene at the prison where Kino Loy finally lets himself process the fact that no one is getting out anymore and that their only chance at freedom is to rebel through an escape. Sergis's performance and his line of no more than 12 are the standout moments from this episode period. You could both see and feel the change in Kino Loy as he learned about the prisoner recycling scam, which just helped to ramp up the excitement and nerves for next week's inevitable breakout mission. Kino is pissed and that's not going to be a good thing for the guards at Narkina 5. Hopefully he makes it out, but Loy's destiny feels rooted in sacrifice, which is kind of the theme of Andor and Rogue One, so the connective tissue between them keeps getting stronger thanks to killer performances by cast members like Andy Serkis and the rather brilliant writing featured throughout this series. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subbing to our YouTube channel. We'd also love for you to join in with our weekly Star Wars podcast. So use the links in this video's description or head to StarWarsTime.net to subscribe to the platform of your choice. There's always time for Star Wars Time. And remember, if you listen to the Star Wars Time show, the Force will be with you. Always. Always.